Uh, this is, uh, honey, we get a close shot right here. Yeah, but it did sound like that she's definitely leftward leaning. Then we get into the whole semantical debate about is there a left and a right, and to me there really isn't. There's a command and control on one end and anarchy on the other, and I want to be on the middle of the real spectrum. Certainly got to have some control in a, in a complex society and civilization. <clears throat> but um, all, the, all the developments I see are pretty bad uh, towards, towards dehumanization. And now you've got the U.N. demanding everybody sign on to this international criminal court. Um, and they're telling the U.S. if we don't sign on, it won't matter. If 60 countries ratify, we'll be under its control. I mean, we're here. We're at global government now. Uh, when they're saying they're going to have some world court in the Netherlands that they'll take anybody they want to, to. Um, these are the, in fact, I was reading some of the talks that, that they've given and they've released that the Bohemian Grove has discussed, and it's all population control, world courts. You're talking 20 years ago. So definitely some stuff's going on here that's pretty important. But is it the ultimate um, elitist retreat? I would imagine those we don't even know the names of. This is probably just one more steering committee where they bring in a lot of underlings and high-level corporate chieftains that really aren't the upper top echelon, make them feel important, and then implement some type of strategy. They're, from the stories I've read and things that happen, I mean, it is pretty well documented that people run around naked. They, ha they have orgies. They go into town and have orgies, and these are world leaders. I got a serious problem with that. It, it, just by the very nature of how this, to me, Bohemian Grove is probably a way to compromise people. You want to be in the New World Order Club? Uh, it's like a big kid fraternity, and just like in fraternities, you have to do weird things. Here, you probably do weird things. But I got a problem with governors and presidents and prime ministers and corporate chieftains running around and doing this uh, when they have uh, so much power over what happens in the public domain. Uh, they have a responsibility. Uh, to, to, to disclose what they're doing. So I think it is important, like you were saying, to somehow try to maintain some security and not be way out in the open uh, because they'll call in a bunch of security. I hear, like he often is. I hear he really enjoys himself here. <laughs> I think Henry Kissinger will be here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, if I got a stink detector, we'll be able to find out where he's at. He's... Oh, it's like everything evil you can imagine, Kissinger's always involved in it. Isn't he a Republican, though? I'm not a Republican. That's the point I keep making. This whole Democrat-Republican deal is a complete... People always go back to that, though. Probably like in your country, you've got Labor and you've got the Tories over there. And it's all the same people behind closed doors. It's just a big joke. And your, your, your leadership, our leadership, it's all the same people. I mean, it, it's a... You do see a fight going on, but it's two different management teams of the same system, you know, bidding for control. What I call them the CEO jobs of Slavery Incorporated. Do you worry for Alex, Violet? Um, I do. I just, uh, because Alex gets so impassioned by what he's doing that sometimes I'm afraid that he might be a little bit, you know, reckless or... Uh, maybe a little bit too fearless. Um, I worry about Alex when he drives down the street to come home. You know, especially I used to worry about him when he had to uh, come home every night from the same, you know, radio studio at the same time in the same car. Um, and, you know, I worry about him sometimes when he's late getting back in the studio and he doesn't give me a call. I mean, you know, he is putting himself out there, but I think the fact that he's in the public eye as much as, it, as he is really, you know, keeps him safe to a certain degree. So maybe something like this is, yeah, well, you know, um, people might not necessarily know where he is right now, you know, people that listen to the radio or whatever, so it's maybe a little bit more risky, and it's a little creepy at night up here in the woods, you know. And you're definitely not dangerous. Mm -hmm. You're not going to do anything stupid this weekend. Well, uh, I mean, dangerous to what? Dangerous to myself? Are these people dangerous? They certainly may be, but I'm, I'm completely nonviolent when it comes to just going out there and trying to get the information. That's what I'm trying to do. I mean, I'm an activist first and foremost, but also a journalist uh, in that uh, I'll make some jokes and speculate occasionally because I'm a radio talk show host. But when I say something that I believe, I have to be uh, on target about it. But uh, dangerous? I'm definitely dangerous to corrupt bureaucrats and their financial bosses uh, that would like to control the American people on the planet. But not in a violent way. Not in a violent way. And long before global government came out in the open in the last four or five years, uh, they were conditioning the public that anyone that talks about global government is a kook, a weirdo, a terrorist, a racist. 
And now they're out on the nightly news saying, global government's here, you better accept it, we're getting rid of juries. Um, all across the planet, uh, the IMF, the World Bank, uh, basically runs things now. The WTO decides what you can buy and sell and trade on the international market. But see, they've preconditioned us that it doesn't exist. They've preconditioned us that anybody that talks about this stuff and who is against it is a kook or a racist because it doesn't exist. And then everybody's decided, well, I'm going to be culturally cool. I want to be in style. I want to be accepted. So even when they're hearing the news admit it and tell us how great it is, they've already pre-positioned it psychologically that it's not acceptable, it's not kosher to discuss it. Do you see the, the tactic they're using there? Mm -hmm. Five years ago, I would laugh when I heard about black helicopters. I would say, I'm about taxes, I'm about corruption, I'm about you know, getting local control back, I'm about states' rights, you know, everything's going, coming under federal control. I was pretty mainstream, what you'd call so-called conservative. Then I saw the light when black helicopters started going into North Carolina, I started going into Florida, they fired into an all-night restaurant in Miami, just training, firing bullets into a place where people were eating. Uh, they started burning buildings, police chiefs started throwing them out of their town, San Antonio. All this started happening, and I said, whoa, this is real. And then I realized that I was preconditioned, even as a so-called conservative uh, person who, was, who understood that the media lied, I didn't realize how thick the propaganda was. If they preconditioned us before, they released something on us that it, number one, doesn't exist in our minds with classic doublethink, but then it can re-exist at the same time if they say it does and it's good. So it's, it's literally George Orwell's doublethink. And, and one has to have it to stay sane in this world. Well, I refuse to be a part of it. I mean, the news every day, black helicopters are a joke. They're stupid. The culture, commercials, movies. At the same time, almost every month in this country, they're attacking and terrorizing some town with burning buildings and terror. And I don't want to be part of their sick control freak system. I don't like these degenerate, inbred, uh, New World Order crowd people. They're not going to run my life. They're not going to control me. And I'm going to try to expose them. And I think we've had some success doing that. Oh, look how pretty it is. Uh huh, it sure is pretty. Mike, you enjoying yourself? Yeah. A lot, a lot uh, less spooky during the daytime. It's all foggy. Now yeah, we're going to take our British friends uh, down into the forest uh, a little bit later tonight. Let them gallivant in the werewolf ridden woods. Joking. They'll add me on there. Alex Jones, radio talk show host, believes werewolves infest Northern California. <laughs> They've been seen dancing with grizzly bears. Small pixies have been even witnessed playing violin for George Bush. Don't know what to make of uh, what's going to happen. I can't even begin to imagine what we're going to discover when I infiltrate tomorrow and try to get the uh, cremation of care. We're very close to the gateway to Bohemian Grove now. The first set of uh, gates and security. They have a small guard check at the front and then they have a larger second one. Not a through road. Get a shot of that. guard gate right over the a small guard gate and then back further an even more elaborate guard gate with surveillance cameras you name it not a through road ladies and gentlemen right up here in northern california how you doing sir okay camp maker yeah oh, i'm alex I'm jones i make documentaries uh i'm just curious uh what do you think about bohemian grove I used to work there. You used to work there? Yeah. And now you work at Camp Meeker? No, I don't work. Yeah, I live in Camp Meeker. Oh, you live there? Yeah. Well, that's great. Uh, did you ever watch The Cremation of Care? Um, no. No. What'd you do at the... I just I just worked there. But, I mean, yeah. you, you never saw them march around in the red robes? And no, that? no. Oh, really? That doesn't go on? Cool, but, yeah. I <laughs> okay. Thanks. What have you guys heard about Bohemian Grove? Oh, I don't know. Bunch of rich people, right? Have you ever heard about the 40-foot stone owl and the mock human sacrifice? I uh, heard about it a little bit, yeah. Roll that window Not down. Yet. We're going to talk to you. Hold on. We'll go around here. Uh, 
Oh, man. Oh, yeah? So what have you heard about the... Oh, I just read stuff about it in the paper. I don't know. Some people don't like it. They protested or something weird. But what about the 40-foot stone owl and the mock human sacrifice? You say you heard something about that? Well, just what I read about in the paper. Oh, the paper admitted that? Well, no, I don't know if they admitted it. They just said people go protest it. It supposedly happens. Sounds kind of weird. It does sound weird to me. Yeah. Why you guys? What are you guys? What are you guys doing? This TV show or something? We're just having fun. Oh yeah. <laughs> this town isn't like Children of the Corn or anything, is it? Oh no, nothing like that.